Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today let's talk about how hard is x-ray school? Long story short, yeah, it can be hard, but is it doable? Oh yeah, 100%. So if you've been thinking about starting this journey, wondering what x-ray school is all about, as well as if you're able to handle it, then keep watching because this video is for you. So with that said, let's first talk about what is x-ray school like? What does it involve? Well, most programs are two years in length leading into associate's degree because you need to have an associate's degree to be eligible to actually sit for your licensing exam. You'll take a mix of classroom courses, such as your anatomy and physiology, radiology physics, pathology and patient care, as well as your hands-on clinical training. So there's a lot packed into this two-year degree, and it's not just a walk in the park, but if you're able to stay on top of your classes, study hard, stay organized, then it is absolutely doable. So now let's talk about how hard are these classes? How much of a challenge are they going to be for me? Well, some of these classes can be challenging, especially if you're not used to studying science-heavy topics. But once you build a foundation and start to understand and grasp how the human body functions and works, then things do start to click and it does become a lot easier. Now I'll bring up a picture of a just very basic general radiology curriculum, what that might look like, but I just wanna preface this first. Every school may have unique classes specific to that school, but they all need to follow the curriculum guidelines set by the ARRT to ensure that students are receiving adequate education and will be eligible to actually sit for the boards. So it is very important to find a program that is accredited by JSERT or the ARRT. All right, so now let's talk about what a general curriculum might look like. So a lot of these classes like anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, mathematical formulas, and English comp can actually be done at other institutions and the credits can usually be transferred. This not only can help break up the workload, but having some of these foundational courses completed beforehand can help your chances of actually getting into a program, as well as it can sometimes be cheaper taking these gen ed courses at a community college or in high school rather than your actual radiology program. When I started college, I changed my major multiple times. So I ended up having a lot of the gen eds already completed, such as my English comp, college algebra, even anatomy and physiology, and some other medical related courses. So one, that helped me get into my institution having those already completed with good grades. And then two, it helped me actually be able to handle the workload more when I started college because I didn't have to take those while other students still had to take those on top of the radiology courses. And then three, it was a lot cheaper for me to take those courses at the public college that I was at rather than the private radiology program that I ended up getting into. But anyways, let's talk about some of the radiology specific courses. Looking at the curriculum right now, your intro to radiography procedures will basically be a class talking about positioning and how to perform certain procedures and exams on patients. And this is a foundation for what you're gonna learn and what you're gonna practice throughout your program. This is what we as x-ray techs do. We are constantly positioning patients for each different exam to ensure that we're getting quality diagnostic images for the radiologist. And the first position or exam you'll learn as a student will be the chest x-ray because it is the most common radiology exam performed by x-ray techs. Um, I've probably done thousands of these exams in my career right now. So again, super, super common. And that's why it's the first thing that you learn. So looking back at our curriculum, your radiography fundamentals and patient care class will talk about the basics of x-rays and radiology, as well as learning how to interact with patients and provide quality care. Your radiology practicum, on the other hand, will be your hands-on clinical experience when you actually start your clinical rotations. Moving on to your next semester, your radiology science will discuss the nature and physics of x-rays and how they were discovered, giving you an understanding of the concepts and science behind radiology, which is foundational for your upcoming courses. And moving on to semester three, you'll start to see a theme regarding the radiographic procedures classes. Semester one, we had radiographic procedures one. Semester two, we had radiographic procedures two. Semester three, we have three. Semester four will be four and so on. And this is where you will really learn more exams and procedures and continue building on the knowledge that you do have. And your radiology practicum and clinicals will help you develop and practice those skills and earn competencies, meaning that a tech just signs you off that you are able to do a specific exam on your own. So you'll start to notice that these classes really build on each other. So it is so important to really stay on top of your studies. And did you notice the English comp class in this semester? If you already completed that class as a gen ed at another institution, say like a public school, then boom, you don't have to take that class this semester. You can just focus on the really radiology heavy classes, such as your practicum, your radiology science, your radiology procedures, because every semester the workload gets more intense. So if you don't have to deal with some of those gen ed classes getting in the way with that, it just helps your studies so much more, helps you stay focused, organized, and just really study hard on the radiology heavy specific topics. 
and I've always heard people asking about the math portion of radiology school. Oh, I've heard it's so bad. It's so hard. I'm not good at math. I failed math in high school. I'm not going to go to radiology school specifically because I heard there's a lot of math involved. Is that true? Well, yeah, there is math involved, but they give you all the formulas and tools to be able to succeed and be able to answer the math questions that you need to. It honestly is not that bad whatsoever. And I don't like math. I don't, I didn't have a good time in college algebra, didn't have a good time doing statistics courses. I pretty much anything math related, I absolutely hate, but I did not have any problems in regarding math when it came to radiology school. It just, it's really not that bad. It's just like the foundations and formulas that you need to memorize. But again, these courses, these classes are so small. You're typically going to have 10 to 20 students per class. So you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your teacher. So for some reason you aren't understanding something, go to the office hours and talk to the teacher. But again, I personally did not think the math was that bad and I am not good at math whatsoever. So don't let that scare you from starting radiology school. And that equation in the thumbnail, the inverse square law, looks to be scary and confusing, but once you learn it, it's really not that bad, and all it does is just describe that the intensity of an x-ray beam decreases rapidly as you move further away from the source, specifically the square of the distance. And in layman's terms, say this cup of coffee here is a radiation source. So the farther away I get from this radiation source, the less radiation I get. Pretty basic. So the main thing is to just stay on top of your coursework and Try to just teach yourself different ways and theories to make things easier, such as that. Yes, if I'm going to go farther away from a radiation source, I'm going to receive less radiation. And that equation just tells you how much less radiation you'll receive by the square of the distance that you move. So again, it's really not that bad. Um, you just have to stay on top of your studies and really focus and prepare and ask questions if you have them, because the last thing you want to do is fall behind in a radiology program. All right, so let's move on now and talk about clinicals. Clinicals are a big part of radiology school. You'll learn everything from positioning to working with the equipment at these radiology sites, as well as soft skills to help communicate with patients to ensure that they know what's going on and they feel comfortable. And some days will just be long and physically demanding, but in those days, I feel like you really start to build your confidence and understand what it takes to be an x-ray tech. And please take your clinical seriously because this is truly a two-year interview. If you do well in clinicals, really show initiative and take it serious, the techs realize that, they see that, and when it comes time to graduate, they will vouch for you to get a job working with them. Hospitals love hiring students because they actually can see their work ethic during the program, and they can help mold them into the techs that they want. If you are slacking off at clinicals, the techs will see that, and when it comes time again to graduate, they're going to be like, this person really didn't show that much work ethic, they didn't show like they really wanted to be there, I don't think they're going to be a good fit for the team. And management will hear that, and you won't get a job. So. Again, it's a two-year interview, take these clinicals serious. And that is something that our imaging director told our class on the very first day was that this is a two-year interview, so treat it as that. And that really stuck with me. And when it came time to go to clinicals, I really tried my best. I mean, you're definitely going to fail on some exams. Things are going to be tough. It's human nature. You are learning. You're a student, so not everything's going to be easy. But you just give it your all. You stock linens when you can. You help out techs when they need to. You get up, you just show initiative, and that really goes a long way. And um, I was rewarded with a job offer six months before I even graduated. So again, that's why it's so important to take your clinical serious. This is where you really want to learn as much as you possibly can, because once you do graduate, you're, you're going to be on your own, and you want to get as comfortable as you can in surgery, in fluoro, doing exams by yourself. And it is very common for x-ray students to have job offers before they even graduate. So just keep that in mind, take your clinical serious, and you most likely will have one, if not a couple job offers before you graduate, because you will go to multiple different clinical sites during your rotations. All right, so now let's move on to radiology school and time management. In my opinion, one of the hardest parts about radiology school isn't the actual material itself, but it's the time management aspect of it. You're balancing lectures, clinical hours, studying, and probably a job on top of that. So staying organized is essential. So I recommend using some type of planner or digital calendar to help keep track of everything. Throughout my time in x-ray school, I held a couple different part-time jobs. And although some days were super long and would be a grind going from clinical to work and then not having a whole lot of time to study, I always knew that this is only a two-year program. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. This isn't forever. But with that said, whenever I found myself falling behind in my coursework or studying, 
I would lighten up on my job hours because I knew that school and this radiology program was my number one priority. I'm paying to be here and this is my future. So I'm not just gonna let some random job that doesn't pay much get in the way of my end goals. So again, make school the priority. All right, so lastly, let's talk about is radiology school worth it? So is x-ray school hard? Yeah, but it's not impossible by any means. If you are passionate about the field and willing to put in the effort, you will absolutely succeed. Plus, the payoff is huge. You'll graduate with a great career that's in demand and full of opportunities to grow. So to wrap things up, if you are someone looking at becoming an x-ray tech and starting your journey in x-ray school, I hope this video gives you kind of a clear picture of what to actually expect. It's a challenge, but one that's 100% worth it. If you have any questions about x-ray school or maybe you want tips or advice on how to handle the stress or handle how to stay organized, whatever the case, drop them in the comments. I will be happy to help. So with that said, you guys take care. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.